My name is Joachim, and I'm a consultant at MDO Technologies. And did you know that last year in June there were 450 global IoT cloud platforms? Not enough. What's that? Not enough. Not enough? <laughs> That's exactly right. And after this talk, you guys will know how to build your own IoT cloud platform. So the ultimate title for my talk is the nine verbs of IoT cloud, cloud platforms. And these nine verbs define the absolute basic functionality you need to create a scalable, secure, and robust IoT cloud platform. So let's again see what these verbs mean and which components we can use to fulfill this functionality. The first one is scale. So the reason you have an IoT cloud platform rather than an IoT platform running on a server in your basement is the cloud's ability to scale. So what does that mean? So before the cloud, you had a server in your basement, and if you needed more cloud resources, you had to buy a bigger server. And you had to move your service to this new server and discard the old one. This is called vertical scaling, and it's time consuming and, and it's cumbersome. Now, the opposite of vertical scaling is horizontal scaling. So instead of buying a bigger server, you buy multiple, often less powerful servers, and you sort of stack them horizontally and then your service can take the combined resources of all these services uh, and uh, have it as it's at its disposal. Now the cloud, we don't care about machines anymore. They're in a data center somewhere, and we don't have to think about that. Instead, we lease virtual servers. And virtual servers is sort of like files. You can copy them, you can move them around, and they can execute on any machine which they end up on. And uh, if you need to, if you need to scale, the cloud will just, you know, copy this virtual machine, sorry, this virtual server, and uh, load balance all the balance so you get more resources. But in order to manage all these virtual servers, we we need we need a way to manage it, and then we have cloud orchestration software. And what, what cloud orchestration software does is they they decide on which machine should this virtual server execute. And it also handles scaling or replicating these virtual servers if you need more resources. So some uh, examples of cloud orchestration software, you have Kubernetes by Google, Mesos by Apache, or Docker Swarm. Now these specific cloud orchestration software or cloud orchestration tools use containers and a container is sort of like a virtual machine, a lightweight virtual machine, which your code is executing inside. And the leading container technology is Docker. So this is an IoT cloud platform, which means you have devices communicating with your, with your server or service. And assuming that you are the you are the guys creating these devices. When they end up in your customer's hands, you have no way of knowing if the data is flowing through secure networks or not. And in order to protect that data from being captured or manipulated, you should encrypt that link. And specifically, if you can, use TLS. That's what we use to encrypt communication with websites. And that's encrypt is a great service where you can have, where you can get uh, certificates which uh, your service will use to facilitate this encryption. Another big piece of your IoT cloud security solution is provisioning. And provisioning is all about device management. It's where you give your devices a unique identity and give it access to cloud resources. So a common way, <clears throat> right, so this identity is used to authenticate with your service. So normally you use username and passwords, uh, but please don't use admin admin as the username and password for, you, for all your devices. In fact, don't use the same username and password for all your devices. Only one needs to be compromised in order to compromise your entire fleet. 
Instead, a stronger form of authentication is TLS mutual authentication, where each device gets a unique certificate which it presents to your service, and then you know it's, it's your device and not someone mimicking your device. So this takes care of authentication. The other part is authorization, where you give access to specific resources. And there you can use something called ACL, Access Control List, which is basically a whitelist of all the resources that this specific device can access. The next verb is collect. So there are many reasons to create, create a connected product, but one high up on the list is the ability to centralize data collection for all your devices. And um, when you have your data in one collection, you can apply big data algorithms or you can feed this data to artificial, artificial intelligence systems to detect normal and abnormal behavior. But there are three things you need to consider, assuming that you are in control of the devices and you can select stuff like protocols. So the first choice is which protocol are we going to use to connect our devices to our platform. And common ones are MQTT, CoAP or HTTP, where MQTT and CoAP are specifically made for embedded devices. Now, you should figure out which protocol works for you, but consider the secure verb. The, the uh, protocol needs to support encryption. The second choice is which server am I going to use to receive all that data? And using MQTT as an example here, because it's very popular for IoT devices, you can use Mosquito, VernMQ, or EMQ. Now consider the scale keeper, the, the scale verb. These servers have to scale horizontally, and that normally means some sort of clustering functionality. EMQ and VernMQ have clustering functionality built in. It's a little bit harder with Mosquito, it gets better vertically. And the third thing to consider is how am I going to store all this data? So the data you're going to get from your devices is probably some sort of sensor value together with a timestamp. And that's called time series data. And you can store time series data in relational databases or in files, but you should probably use a database specifically made to handle time series data, for example, InfluxDB or TimeScale. Again, consider the scale keyword. Your database should be able to scale horizontally using some sort of clustering or sharding technologies. TimeScale has clustering built in, and InfluxDB can scale horizontally, but it's a little bit more tricky. All right, so in your cloud, you're going to have all these components, and you're going to have replicas of some components because they scale horizontally. And if you have a monitoring solution that collects cloud metrics, and uh, like um, CPU load or traffic that's coming into your cloud, you can uh, avoid unexpected downtime by, by detecting earlier detecting failures earlier or abnormal behavior. But an effective monitoring solution also have a rules engine that will act on this data automatically. So for example, if you det or if it detects a sudden spike in traffic, it can send you a notification or it can automatically scale your cloud by letting your cloud orchestration software know that it needs more resources. Prometheus is a great monitoring software. Uh, it has great support with a lot of open source components, and you can use Capacitor as the rules engine. All right, so you have, you have your devices. They can communicate with the cloud securely. They can send data. You can store all that data. Now what? Well. Time series data is great to visualize as graphs. 
So in order to get a great overview of what's going on with your devices, use the visualization tool that can show these graphs in, in, a, in a dashboard. And uh, some tools to use is Grafana and uh, Chrome Graph, or Grafana is a more popular one. Back to your devices, again assuming you're in control of the device, after you manufacture your device, there's some time between your customers gets them in your hand. And during that time you might find a security hole, or you can find a bug, or you want to add a feature. So make sure you have a device firmware upgrade solution. I'm not going to talk more about this, because tomorrow at 4 my colleague Mirza is going to go in depth of device firmware upgrade here at 4 o'clock. Don't miss that talk. Alright, so no cloud platform is complete without customization. The verbs I've been talking about is there to support your platform. But this is probably where you make your money. Unless it's in visualization, then you can use the previous verb. So this is where you add components to, for example, import data from other clouds or you can export data to another service. Or maybe have a web app that interface your customers with your clouds, or that web app has some sort of web service that interface your database with your web application. Depending on the application you have, you can have different types of data that you need to handle. For example, if you have this big data analytics component, you're probably going to have large amounts of unstructured data. And you can use databases like Cassandra or MongoDB to store that data. Or maybe you have an e-commerce solution where you have a registry of customers and you have a list of products and prices. And that's more relational data. And you can use something like PostgreSQL or MySQL to store that data. Or maybe you just have a bunch of individual values that you need to access quickly. And you can use a key value database such as Redis. Again, consider the scale keyword. The, um, the database needs to be able to scale horizontally using clustering or sharding technologies, which all of these components do. PostgreSQL can scale as a cluster if you use a plugin from Citus Data. All right, this brings us to the fi final verb. Backup. Your customer and device data is the most valuable asset you have in your cloud and you should make sure that you never lose them. So there, it's, it's hard to find a general backup solution because it depends on how your data is stored and how it's distributed. But uh, your IoT cloud platform is probably going to execute on some cloud provider and they have backup solutions. You should figure out what those are and probably use those. They might be the best option for you. All right, so bringing it all together, this is your IoT Cloud Platform. On the left side, you have devices generating data, and it's gonna flow through your cloud where it's being refined, and then it's gonna be consumed on the right side by some sort of application. All right, that's all you need. Now you know how to build IoT cloud platforms. And I expect to see many more in the near future. Thank you very much, that is all I had. Slides available? Yes, I will. Can I ask all the speakers afterwards and, and link to whatever they have more tools if they would be yes? That's it? Anything else? Well, if you want to talk more about IoT Cloud Platforms, I'm at NDL's table today and tomorrow. Thank you very much.